Hey, what's going on guys? What is happening YouTube and thank you for tuning in to Rules for Rebels. I wanted to share an article with you guys today. Uh, it's about a new Amazon policy that's being rolled out called Pay by Invoice. And the way that Amazon is kind of rolling out this invoicing to larger businesses it is really being done on the backs of sellers. And sellers are the ones uh, being expected to essentially finance these payments, which can hurt small businesses. Um, so a lot of sellers are outraged about this. In the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's going to affect a lot of sellers. Basically what's happening is Amazon is going to give uh, large businesses and it, there's going to be some type of uh, accreditation or, or credit check or something like that. But Amazon is going to allow large businesses to have a 30-day uh, invoicing period, uh, 30 day terms to pay. Now, what PayPal actually offers something similar to this, right? So if you guys ever buy things on eBay or even as sellers on eBay, you guys may have run into somebody using this. As a seller, you probably don't even know that the customer is using this. Uh, but PayPal actually has a credit line. Uh, when you check out from PayPal, sometimes we'll say, do you want to not pay for, I forget what it is, 30 days, 45 days, 90 days, six months, whatever it is. Actually, now that I think about it, I think it's six months, no interest. Um, a long time ago, years ago, I had a customer place about a $1,000 order. They use this PayPal line of credit. I think we wound up having to refund his order for some reason. And it wound up actually kind of causing a bit he big headache for him because it was done through credit. It took him a while to get his money back. But the way uh, the way PayPal and eBay's credit system works is basically PayPal or some third party company is issuing the credit. So the seller gets the money instantly. If you buy something from me and you use PayPal's credit line, I'm giving the money for the purchase instantly. And the whole credit thing is between you and PayPal and you have six months to pay them off. Well, Amazon is trying to do something similar, except instead of Amazon being the one issuing the credit, you, the seller, are the one who's going to have to wait an additional 30 days to get paid. So Amazon typically pays out every two weeks. Uh, with my account, we get paid every 30 days. I'm not sure why. It has something to do with volume. Um, but uh, we, we already wait 30 days to get paid. So now Amazon is going to give customers another 30 days um, on 30 day credit terms. So there's 30 days before the company has to pay. And then I'm assuming there's going to be another 30 day period uh, for my particular business where we'd have to wait to get paid out. For most of you guys, it's probably a week or two. So you'd probably be looking at 45 days. Uh, but this is incredibly unfair that Amazon wants to offer credit to larger businesses to help grow their business. But again, instead of them being the one to lay out the money and finance this, you are the one laying out the money. Now, one problem or one question that I had is if these businesses don't pay, are you on the hook because Amazon decided to issue credit to a company? Um, and, and apparently Amazon will, if there's late payments or a company doesn't pay, Amazon will pay you. But it still just seems really, really unfair that Amazon's growing their business on the backs of sellers. Now, in the grand scheme of things, is this going to affect a lot of small-time Amazon sellers? Probably not unless you sell items that a business is going to use. So, I mean, if you're selling spatulas or camping hammocks or, you know, Bluetooth headphones or speakers or whatever else, there's probably not a lot of businesses who are going to be buying things from you. But if you sell 30 up labels, if you sell tape, if you sell poly mailers, if you sell like packaging goods or really any supplies that might be used by a business, potentially this could affect you. So I'm kind of curious to hear hear your guys' thoughts on this. Go ahead and drop a, a comment in the comment section below. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of it. I, I think it's kind of a, a shitty way to kind of run your business. Amazon has, has more than enough money. They really don't need to put this on, on small time sellers and small businesses. But, you know, yet another, you know, am, am I shocked that Amazon is basically doing something to benefit themselves and hurt sellers? Absolutely not. I mean, that's what Amazon does. Um, you know, it, it's yet another reason why you should never rely on Amazon, why you should never put too much control in Amazon's hands, why you should never build a business on Amazon or really any third party for that matter. Um, so that's really kind of everything in summary. I'll go through here and, and read the article for anybody who, who wants to kind of hear the whole thing. So some Amazon sellers are outraged over a new payment policy designed to attract more corporate buyers. Amazon recently rolled out a new payment policy called pay by invoice. So business customers can buy in the marketplace and have more time to pay their bills. 
Some sellers are worried that waiting 30 days for payment instead of getting paid every week or two will put them in a cash crunch. The new policy means corporate buyers can shop on a broader marketplace and not be restricted to Amazon business. Now, uh, two more things I wanted to point out about this. So I've talked before about how PayPal has done rolling reserves to me. At one point, my, me and my partner, our company, had over $150,000 tied up in PayPal reserves, and that meant that we couldn't order inventory. So what we wound up having to do with raise prices, uh, we also fortunately had a couple understand suppliers who we'd been doing business with for a while who offered to front us inventory and kind of help us through that cash crunch and we got through it we probably did lose a little bit of business but that absolutely sucks having to go through this here's another problem I don't trust Amazon. So at one point in time, I think Amazon's only held my money one time. PayPal's done it more than that but uh, me and my partner had, had a it was probably at the peak of our Amazon business. I think we had about $47,000 in pending payouts. Uh, Amazon wound up freezing our account uh, sending us a form letter that didn't really explain why whatsoever. Uh, they took away our contact Amazon button, so I had no way of initiating a call, or I think back then even a chat. I had no way of initiating any contact with them. Um, 30 days went by, 60 days went by. I forget why 90 days was the countdown. I think they, they said after 90 days the money would be released. Um, anyhow, I think 93 days came. I started bombarding Amazon's executive offices and even sending letters to Jeff Bezos personally, um, you know, kind of ranting about this and what's going on. And if I'm not mistaken, they're considered a payment processor or a money transmitter. And I believe what they were doing, even if they did release money in 90 days, violated uh, like money transmission laws and things like that. But anyhow, at the 93 day mark, I started sending in letters to them. Uh, within a couple days of Amazon getting a few letters from me, I actually did get an email from Executive Services. Uh, they released the money, never really told me why it was held or why it was taken. They didn't close my account. My account was still in good standing and allowed to sell. So the whole thing made absolutely no sense. But they held $47,000 of our money for no reason. And just kind of a, a funny part to that story, I actually wound up contacting a law firm out in Seattle um, to uh, to try to get my money back for me. And to my surprise, they, they reached back out to me and said, uh, we're on retainer for Amazon. We can't help you out. So uh, fortunately, I did get my money back. But, you know, I never like having too much money tied up with Amazon or anybody for that matter. But uh, moving on to the story, Amazon is trying to lure business buyers onto its fast-growing marketplace, offering them extended periods to pay for things like heavy equipment and office supplies. Sellers fear the change is coming at their expense. In an email to sellers earlier this month, Amazon said that its third-party merchants, which, which utilize the company's fulfillment centers and logistics system, would be part of a new policy that gives qualified businesses 30 days to pay their bills. For consumer products, sellers are used to getting paid within a week or two. Uh, by applying the pay-by-invoice service to the broader marketplace, Corporate customers no longer have to rely on a specialized Amazon business to get the benefit of longer pay payment periods. Starting August 8th, products from the general marketplace sellers could be automatically could become automatically eligible for invoicing purchases, according to the email, which was viewed by CNBC. So this is not something that you have the ability to opt out of, right? Like, I think that would be better if Amazon said, look, if you guys want, you know, more businesses to shop with you, this is the great opportunity to make yourself more attractive to corporate buyers but you know if you can't you know stand the, the cash flow issues that this may cause you have the ability to opt out well amazon is not letting you opt out everybody is automatically in uh len lengthening the cash payment cycle could create a cash crunch for sellers who rely on speedier payments to buy inventory and fund their operations said jerry cavish the ceo of 3p marketplace solutions a consulting firm for amazon marketplace sellers cash is always tight and challenges for small companies and challenging for small companies, said Kavish, this policy could put sellers in a cash bind where they may not be able to pay suppliers and employees, which is problematic at best and worse could put them out of business. An Amazon spokesperson divide, declined to provide comment for this story. And here's another thing. I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, you know, are you? what kind of business are you running if you're really that cash strapped? But keep in mind, like when you're ordering from China, which a lot of people do, uh, you know, it may take your shipment 30, 45 days uh, to make it over here to the States plus production time. So, you know, it's not necessarily as if you can get money freed up and have new product in a week. Like sometimes there might be a month, six weeks, even two months downtime between orders. So you're having to pay your supplier and then you may have to wait, you know, 30, 45, 60 days to actually get that inventory. And so this really could cause problems. Uh, sales growth versus slower payments. 
Amazon told sellers in the email that this change is meant to draw more corporate buyers to the marketplace and could open up a new revenue channel for customers who wouldn't otherwise shop with them. Sellers that want cash faster than 30 days can pay an additional 1.5% of the invoiced amount. Uh, pay by invoice represents a new growth opportunity for sellers, encouraging Amazon business customers to use Amazon Marketplace as their primary channel for B2B purchases, Amazon wrote. But sellers are skeptical. One seller who asked to have his name withheld out of fear of retribution said Amazon should have given merchants a choice to participate because cash management is such a sensitive part of their businesses. Amazon is using you, the seller, to finance their growth of its, cust of its business customers, the seller said. Uh, Amazon first announced plans for the new policy in May, sparking debate across the seller forums as to whether it would be a benefit or a hindrance. One merchant wrote, this might work for big distributors with enough budgets to cover terms, but for me or any small business owner, another poster said, just a single order for $5,000 of gear not paid for 30 days is enough to put many small businesses in a cash flow pinch with their suppliers who are not going to wait 30 days. More anxiety, Abraham Kramali, founder of XP Strategy, a marketplace consultant, said the new payment program has created more anxiety for sellers than actual problems. He noted that qualified business customers account for a tiny percentage of overall volume. Additionally, Amazon is taking on some of the risk by guaranteeing payment on late or default invoices. Amazon wants the sales pie to be bigger, Kramali said. Uh, the new policy could also force sellers to become smarter with their cash, said Chris Masters, founder of the Bobsled Marketing, Marketing, a firm that helps companies sell in the marketplace. Amazon's weekly and bi-weekly payment cycles are much more generous than some big box retailers, which typically ask for 60 or 90 day terms, she said. Some sellers have, have become reliant on these fast payments and don't have a cash flow model to be able to accept these terms, Master said. So here's one interesting thing to me. There is nothing fast about Amazon's payments, right? Like it, it's not terrible, but if you sell on PayPal, unless you have a brand new account, you can transfer that money to your bank. What I think now it's instantly, if not maybe two to three days at the most, um, with a, a merchant processor like First Data or Stripe or Shopify payments or whatever else, uh, if I batch anything I batch out by five o'clock, I'm paid out on the next day. Worst case scenario, I have it 24 hours after that. So, I mean, Amazon has always been kind of a slow payer with, uh, I mean, in my, I've never had seven day terms. Mine have always been 14 or 30 days. So in my experience, I wouldn't consider Amazon to be fast by any means. And this is just lengthening that time. Uh, but Kevish said this is yet another hurdle for small sellers who already survive on thin net profit margins of 2% to 5%. It's going to potentially make it difficult for some to stay in business, he said. This new policy at least doubles the cash a small seller needs to have on hand in order to operate, which many small firms simply do not have and do not have the ability to access, Cavish said. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, in the overall scheme of things, again, Amazon corporate customers or business to business customers, they make up a very small percentage of Amazon buyers. Uh, secondly, unless you're selling office supplies or something that a business uses, you're probably not ever going to have somebody come buy your item. You know, like, like I said, if you're selling spatulas or camping hammocks or, you know, paddleboard paddles or whatever else, I highly doubt any business is going to be buying from you. Um, but, you know, if, if you're, like I said, if you're selling bubble mailers or something else, this probably will affect you. Again, curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Drop a comment in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video, guys.